Having trouble with navel orange worm in the orchard? Sidetrack, now miso mating disruption is your best bet to minimize loss and maximize profitability. Used with Tresse's new multi-gender lures for your monitoring program, you can achieve the quality yields you deserve. Contact your local sales rep today. Hello, I'm Matthew Malcolm with Pacific Nut Producer Magazine, reporting to you here today with Brent Holtz from the UC Cooperative Extension. Uh, based in San Joaquin County, also the author of our Almond Tasks in Pacific Nut Producer Magazine. I uh, wanted to talk today about bloom diseases in almond as growers prepare for, for another season. What can they do to, to, to be ready to get the best crop possible in mitigating a bloom disease? Uh, hi, Matthew. Thank you for inviting me again to your expo and, and also to be able to speak uh, on almond bloom diseases. I think one of the most important things I like to get across to growers is is that uh, well, first of all, we need to identify you know what diseases are present in a grower's orchard, and then we need to go about controlling those particular diseases. And one of the things that I've observed that I tried to stress in my presentation is that a lot of growers get really excited for bloom and for the upcoming season, and when the first flowers open up, they tend to run the spray rigs. And, you know, the first variety that blooms is the nonpareil variety, and it is actually the most resistant variety to brown rot that we have and some of the other diseases. So I try to get growers to not be so excited about spraying early, especially that pink bud spray where just there's one or two blooms in the op uh, open. Uh, brown rot, which is the first major disease we deal with, you know, starts... Um, the flowers have to be open for the disease, for the pathogens to get in for the brown rot fungus. And if the flowers aren't open, the, f the fungus isn't going to get in. And spray timing is, is basically related to trying to get, trying to put the spray on when the most flowers are open. So, and I've noticed through the years that a lot of growers go too early with their brown rot spray and then get often get, often get caught at the end of the year without a spray for some late season diseases that come along and can catch them without a spray. So I tried to emphasize, you know, for growers to watch their bloom, know their diseases and to spray, to not spray as early, especially the nonpareil, maybe wait till 30, 40% of the blossoms are open on nonpareil or full bloom and take that pink bud spray that they usually spray too early and put it later in the season for a typically uh, for a typical scab uh, anthracnose alternaria spray, which would be two to five weeks after petal fall. And this is all depending if we actually have rain events. If we're in another drought, we might not need to spray as much. But even in the drought situations, I've seen some of these late season diseases come along and cause disease. So even if, it, if there is a drought, let's, let's not spray our pink bud spray so early or at all, especially on our nonpareil save it for nonpareil full bloom, and then it will catch the pollinators when they need it, which tend to be more susceptible. Well, thank you so much, Brent. Um, you know, those crop protection materials are very expensive, so we want to make the best use of them at the right time. So thank you so much. Read more uh, with his uh, monthly task list, the Almond Tasks in Pacific Nut Producer Magazine. I'm Matthew Malcolm, CaliforniaAgNet.com.